Well, good evening, John. If you go to any city meeting, any town hall meeting in New Orleans, blight continues to be one of the top issues residents have 10 years after the storm. That's because there's still thousands of blighted properties across the city that look like this, where neighbors never came back. Many of them did not come back to rebuild. While everyone in the city agrees there has been progress, the amount of progress remains an ongoing debate. Even 10 years later, abandoned homes and overgrown lots are easy to spot across New Orleans. An incredible amount has changed. But Mayor Mitch Landrieu says the city's all-out war on blight is working, cleaning up the most visible scars from the storm. We've now taken blight down faster in this city than anywhere else in America. We created Blightstat, which is a public forum for citizens to come to. We have completely reorganized our attack on private property owners that have basically left their property for somebody else to take care of. Following Katrina, city leaders estimated there were more than 45,000 blighted properties in New Orleans. In the past five years, they say that's been reduced by more than 10,000. Some were torn down by the city, but much of the change came from neighbors and nonprofits renovating and rebuilding. That was the case in the city's Gentilly neighborhood, where flood water reached the roofs and most homes were lost. This neighborhood requires you to do something. We have a neighborhood association, and they're not going to let you just stand by and not do anything. We stayed on top of these people to keep their lots cut. But a couple miles and away, some of Joycelyn Evans' neighbors never came back. This? Looks like a little jungle, and it's dangerous. You don't know what's in here. Yeah. For several years, her neighbor, Carl Edgefield, has been fighting to get this home next to his torn down. And I went to City Hall last year five times in a row, every week. I'm mad. <laughs> You're right. I'm, <laughs> I'm more than mad. I'm, I'm a little ticked off about this because nothing being done. I mean, it pulls down my, the value of my home and everything, the whole neighborhood. The city website that tracks the status of some properties shows the long history of violations against the home, from sanitation rodents to exterior problems, 19 current violations in all. In 2011, the home was first deemed unoccupied. Two years later, it was declared a public nuisance. And finally, last year, a guilty verdict was delivered. The property is now in the abatement phase, meaning it could soon be demolished. It's in their eyes. It's in their face. Councilwoman Latoya Cantrell co-sponsored several ordinances aimed at making things easier for people like Carl, including one that allows the city to cut grass on private property and tack the cost onto the owner's property tax bill. The city also started to expedite the inspection and hearing process. Still, Cantrell says New Orleans lacks an overall strategy. You focus on blight that's around these investments and you start to then drill down on those properties and you create a tip and you move from there on out. And even now, it's not fully clear how many blighted properties there are. The Postal Service stopped keeping tally several years ago. The city largely bases its progress on a study led by Peter Yawkey at the University of New Orleans. He's tracked hundreds of blighted properties since 2006, but admits even his findings don't paint a full picture. It's understandable that some people would look at this overall statistics and don't feel like it applies to their neighborhood because, frankly, you know, some neighborhoods are much worse than the overall statistic. Some have argued that it's unfair to say that we reduce blight by X number of homes, 10,000 homes, 20,000 homes, when there's no accurate, complete list of those homes. Well, I don't, people can say whatever they want. I don't think that there's any doubt that we have moved the ball in the way right direction. But for Carl Edgefield, it's not moving fast enough. Something wrong. Somebody not doing their job. And that's it. That's the bottom line.